And we're back. Talking golf. Tee off with Jan Stevenson. And Eric Cole. You sound defeated. You sound defeated. You know, I understand why reaction videos are really popular. And I also understand why being part of the media, you want to get that reaction right after an event. You, you don't want to wait. <laughs> But there's still a lot of – I still have a lot of animosity towards uh, Hideki Matsuyama and his uh, lucky uh, kiss-ass uh, Sunday. Uh, you know, analysts try to break down as much as they want this, that, and the other thing. Uh, but uh, it's sort of like Wyndham Clark this year. Both of them have done nothing except put one awesome round together, and, uh, and that uh, gets him the win. Uh, and Matsuyama just stole my uh, Zalatoris pick, my Luca Liz pick. Yeah, uh, you had two in the mix. I put yeah. big money, as you know, on Zalatoris before the golf event began. We had him at 50 to 1. So, yes, very, very upset of how that turned out. Uh, because, you know, where, where are, where are uh, Matsuyamas and Wyndham Clarks of the world? You know, where are uh, – we're going to just – go crazy in the final round and steal a tournament yeah i mean I, I i feel like i got that with with nick taylor it wasn't the final round but it was his first round you know i got the crazy spike putting week so i, I kind of I, I got mine you're, you're due for yours um well i've only had one in my career that was jb holmes when he won houston a long time ago he had an awesome final round and stole it that's the only time i have ever had somebody do that where they have stolen an event on the final round, you know, to come from nowhere. Uh, Matsuyama was probably, I would guess, what, 50 to 100 to 1 on Sunday to start the round? Um, I would guess. Yeah, I don't know what he was. I don't, I don't know what he was Sunday. He was 80 in a lot of spots pre tournament. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's usually how it is when you know, yeah. because the history, remember the history of that event? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 I have to guess that he broke the record. For comeback, uh, uh, biggest comeback, yeah, yeah. he might have. He, he he tied he tied the course record with his uh, what was it a sixty two? Uh, is that what it was? He tied it on the yeah. final round. Just I, mean, like, I mean, just like Wyndham Clark. Yeah, Wyndham Clark broke and, and his, it. Hideki, yeah, yeah, Wyndham broke it. Hideki's round was more impressive to me because Wyndham's was an absurd putting performance. Hideki was mostly ball striking. I mean, the two oh, the approach he hit on. Give me a break. <laughs> Fifteen and sixteen. I mean, they they both they both could have gone in the hole. Ridiculous. Um, you know, and I and I, I think Hideki's got to be up there for me as the player who's cost me the most money just as a as a bet because I've I've never hit him. I haven't been really? on him for any wins. I hit I I bet him I bet him twice this year already. I bet him at Sony and I bet him at um, Farmers. And after Farmers, I kind of convinced myself that you know he was just kind of done winning. Um, and then a few weeks later, he does that. And it, it you know, it not not a surprise because you know he has the ball striking, he has the around the green game that you want at Riv. I think I think on last week's show we talked about the Riviera Augusta crossover, right? A lot of guys who have yes, you know, played well one course have played well at the other. Hideki, a Masters champion, wins at Riviera. So I was not, I was never going to get on him. Last week, I, I was looking back at him on Sunday night. Just he hadn't played well here the last couple times. He really hadn't played well coming in. Even his um, pretty solid showing at waste management was a lot of around the green, chipping kind of lucky stuff. Um, so I, I was never gonna gonna bet him. But you know, eighty to one. If you were gonna bet him, it was just a you know price value kind of play, right? Hideki at eighty to one is probably probably worth a few bucks. Well. He was he's the, the record still stands as far as nobody has won at Genesis when you start the final round outside the top ten. So he started a sixth, I guess. That's what it says here on the leaderboard. Uh, he went from sixth to first. Was right. he sixth? It might have been. I mean, there was a it was kind of spread, I guess. Yeah, I, I believe it was sixth. Uh, and let's see. And then the other trend, uh, the last 19 winners started no more than four shots back. So what was he? So he was, where was Cantley? Cantley, yeah. So he, he was he, more than four shots back. Yeah, I was gonna say, he, he was at least six, right? 
he outgunned Cantley by because Cantley was the leader, correct? Co-leader or leader, leader, right? Cantley was the leader by two over Xander and uh, Zal Torres. Right? So he outshot Cantley by ten, yeah. and beat him by four. Yeah. So he yeah. was six so, back then. Yeah. So I mean, the the takeaways for me from last week beyond Hideki, Cantley and Xander. I mean, just the pathetic Sunday performance. <sighs> which has been the story of their careers for the past couple of years. And I don't know how you bet those guys until they start to get up to, you know, 25, 30 to one. Yep. Just like that, that their stats say they should be 15 to one for these tournaments, but they just, they just don't win. Um, and then the other takeaway, obviously is Will Zell Torres, who kind of the, kind of the story of his career has been <laughs> just not being able to close on Sundays, but I, I don't think it's him. Like, I, I don't think he, I don't think Zale Torres played. No, I mean, he was he, fine. He, he, could have, he could have made a couple more putts, right? Which is, you know, it's, it's Zale Torres, but he didn't, he didn't lose it. Hideki won it. Um, and that's, that's kind of been the story for Zale Torres, but he, he continues to one trend up after the health issues. And then two, just, he just plays well on these tougher courses with strong fields. So, um, you know, for, for the, I, I think, I think he's live for all four of the majors this year. Yeah, we're going to get into that. We promised that uh, last week, and we're going to do that. We're going to get into an early look at the futures because we're all looking to take advantage of the odds right now before they start changing. Masters, U.S. Open, PGA, and Open Championship. We're getting into that uh, because Mexico is Mexico. Um, but, yeah, uh, that and, and Jared will not be here next week. So Jan Stevenson, uh, that's a hell of a fill-in. She'll be filling in for Jared next week. And it's an upgrade. And it's actually good timing because she st it starts the Florida swing where Jan is. So nice timing. And uh, just found out, too, that there's going to be some uh, really, I mean, not a lot, but definitely a good number, of, at least a handful of better players at PGA National this this uh, this, season, this year. McElroy, we, we talked about that. Fitzpatrick is now entered. Lowry always enters. Rose is also going to play. Cam Young is going to play. Straka, Eric Cole, so defending champ Kirk. So yeah, it's going to be a, a, a and 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 it's unfortunate that's not a better field either because it's a really tough, tough golf course. Yeah, so tough, tough core. Of course, I like. I, I wish it would get stronger fields. I know it's. I I think at some point they'll make that an elevated event. Be my, that would my be guess. awesome as they rotate those. Through. Yes. Um, Force but as them an to Alex, go. Where it is, yeah, where it is on the schedule, it's tough because guys know they're going to be playing uh, Bay Hill and, and players the following two weeks. Well, they could always, uh, yeah, th they could probably have they probably have to change it. They probably have to, to do something with the schedule because that's what they did with Mexico. Mexico this this year it's in February, right? Uh, it used to be in April, yeah. so they'd have to do something like that. Switch maybe switch the Honda to another completely different month. It's possible. I don't know. I know it would change everything, yeah. but we'll leave that yeah, up to Florida. you. Can play, you can play in Florida any time of year, right? Yeah. It's just that yeah. I know the wind changes on the, the where the seasons are, so I don't know what that would do to the golf course because that was always a big thing with the players uh, right. when they changed that uh, schedule. But, yeah, coming up, Florida Swing, starting next week, so it's going to be a lot of fun. And then Jared will be back for an, a big stretch, beginning with Bay Hill, uh, in a couple of weeks. But this – week we've got mexico and yeah did you snicker is that a snicker okay <laughs> no i mean i'm i'm excited i i put in the work um, yeah that's the thing you have to put in the work this week you're absolutely yeah, right I, yeah which i like um i yep. think you know maybe gives us even more of an edge than usual i hope so because once because really look it, it's another week on the pga tour where the only time that we've had two legitimate winners, like high-profile players win, it, they did it by by scoring records, one with a postponement on Sunday. All the others have been like crazy long shots and like, how did that guy do it? So it's still a very... And even if you think about it, I'm sure Wyndham Clark was a long shot heading into the third round on Saturday, on Friday, right. no, on Friday. Saturday, Saturday, excuse me. Saturday, right? Was yep. Pebble Wednesday that? I don't know, whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, Matsuyama 
big long shot. So really, even they were long shots before their final rounds when they pulled it off. That's the thing that is just continuing. And because everybody's going to go 20 feet now and one and done. I'm sure. I mean, come on. I half half the half the uh, contestants are probably going to go with Tony Finau. Did they do that last year? Did you check to find out how many went with Tony Finau uh, last year? I don't. I don't think the site that hosts ours lets you go back and see. Uh, that's too. Um, good. You don't remember that, I, I guess, huh? Well, Ram, Ram was in the field last year, wasn't he? Correct. Yep. So, I mean, I'm sure that. Yeah, but why would you pick Ram? I don't, I don't think as Mexico. many people picked Ram, but I think you know at that. Yeah, you know, I don't think I don't think Finau will be fifty percent this week. He could creep to close to thirty, okay. maybe. Um, yeah, it's 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 pretty much the same field. It's not like there's a whole new. I mean, right. the, the thing is, the players are better though, so it's pretty much the same field. But the the players are playing better than they were last year. So it it is a very difficult week to figure out. Especially yeah. the one and done, because if you don't take fee now, mm-hmm. anybody can yeah, miss I mean, a cut in right. this group, just like Justin Thomas did for us last week. I mean, I mean, I, I don't know how we forgot about that, but come yeah. on, yeah, you you just gotta throw your hands up and say it's golf, and that's what makes this hard. Is this stuff is not predictable, right? I mean, there was nothing you could look at with Justin Thomas to say that he was going to put out that type of performance. Yeah, maybe it was the playing with Tiger thing. I know we, we talked about it um, after the tea times came out. I mean, he's played with Tiger a bunch, and he's played well with Tiger, so I don't know. But I don't um, know. And even fr- you know, from the from the first tee shot on Thursday, he was just horrible. Um, didn't get any better. Now, I mean, I'm still I- I'm still I'm still on Justin Thomas going forward. Yeah, he I needs to rebound though see, in his next one. Maybe yeah. I want to see him. Yeah, maybe I want to see him bounce back once before batting him again. But you know, hopefully this this um, lowers his odds again. You know, maybe back into the you know twenty five to thirty to one range. Cause I I still think yeah. it's trending back towards you know pre twenty twenty two Justin Thomas and 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 is gonna gonna win at some point this year. And again, it's a tough golf course. Oh, you yeah. know, I mean, we're seeing. Yeah. I mean, there were some really good players that did not make the cut and did not play well. And, and look, the one thing, though, that did stand up, and I talk, we talked about this, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago. Remember, and, it's, and it happened again, Justin Thomas, and I probably should have listened to myself, but Justin Thomas has never won a PGA Tour event in his third consecutive week of playing. I don't know why. It's just a fact. <laughs> so from now on, I am not touching him on one and dones. We're putting big money on him. When he's played his third consecutive week of action, um, but that's it. It's all I can go on. All right. Good news. Good news for good news for one and done though. Just one more note on last week because Scotty Scheffler was very popular in one and done last week. That's right. Oh, that's right. It was a he, um, big event. I mean, he, yeah. he came. He came tenth, which you know he's still a decent payday, but um, that that's going to give us a chance to yeah you're hopefully right. use Scheffler when he makes a lot more money. Thanks for uh, I needed that. I did, but look, it's still early because of all the crazy winners and you just have to, as long as you look, we knew that you had to win what? Six, seven. I think it's usually at least that. And you know, that's probably including at least a couple majors or elevated events. And this year, maybe it's one less because of all the crazy stuff that's happened. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to look, I don't think anyone in ours, which, you know, has thousands and thousands of people has hit, um, Oh, More nobody – just it's two. That's it. It has to be two because it was one last week. So it's two. I don't know so, how many have someone, two. Someone's hit two winners, you think? Well, they had one. They had to have taken Matsuyama. Well, then, yeah. Did the ones take Matsuyama? Yeah, I'm saying – I'm, I'm not sure anyone's – I I don't think anyone's hit um, two winners. I, 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 I can check right now. Yeah, go ahead. I, I yeah, think I, they would, statistically really. speaking. No, no, no. No one's hit two winners. Really? Yep. So everybody's leader, still on one. The leader That's has good. five point seven. The leader has five point seven million. He okay. hit Wyndham. He has a couple. He has a. He got. Oh, well, I guess this guy did essentially hit two winners because he had your boy Bazaden how at Amex. Oh, that little the, thing. Part, so, okay. Yeah, so. Oh, did he have Clark and Bazaden out? Yes. Oh, <laughs> give me. Can I have a lottery ticket for you, D- dude? Please. What are the numbers? Oh, I mean, oh, give me oh, a break. Get this though, this guy also picked Hideki 
last week at waste management. So he was oh. one week early on it. Okay. So he got, yeah, he felt, he felt, he feels pretty bad now this week, but just imagine, imagine if you had Wyndham Clark and Bazo- and Bazoonhoot in the yeah, same the season. The thing was super lucky. Crazy. Yeah. All right. So yeah, the one and done's man, that's going to be really hard. Uh, as we, uh, take a look, I'm going to pop up the odds. So there you go. Finau is now eight to one. Uh, Hoygaard is 16, and then you just have a whole bunch of players like that are between 22 and like I don't know 30. This group here from Jaeger to probably I, I'd say the Jaeger Mitchell uh, Dietrich Pendrith Grio. That that's that, there's a lot of possibilities with those guys. Um. For but one and done. For uh, for one and done, and just yeah, for, for generally uh, uh, winning this week, and yeah. um, and then you just wonder about if any week's going to be a, a long shot week. Well, why wouldn't yeah. it be this week? So right, I um, I usually try not to go beyond like thirty thirty five to one for my one and done picks, but I I think this week you can go down there, you know, not, not to the, that range, but, you know, to the 50, 60 to one. I, I just, I don't think there's a ton of difference between the guys at, you know, 50 to one and the guys at 30 to one. So I, I don't, you know, expect, and again, it's a, it's a small prize pool, one of the smallest of the year. So I think you can get a little, a little funky with your one and done pick this week if you want. All right. So Finau, does, if he wins this week, it'll be the Tony Finau open. Yeah. Uh, second and first combined 40 under par. And he hasn't had. He's only had one top five since winning here. So look, if you take Finau, more power to you. I'm not going to balk against taking him. Um, I mean, you have to think about it. There's no question. Um, next up, Hoygaard, uh, and I definitely will think about Hoygaard at one mm-hmm. and done. And um, not just because of his talent, but oh, by the way, bef- uh, did, let's let's get into this because this is important before we break this down. Let's go over because you just talked about how br- uh, breaking down and and doing research for this event, and you did a great job uh, of doing that. As we pop up the stats, let me just pop. I think I can almost hear me too. I, I forgot I have to put the mics on. All right, so I got the mic on now, so you can hear me. These are the stats. You get the regular top ten. Of course, look, you you got two, two years only, but then you got top ten strokes gained off tee plus driving distance last twelve months, and then let me take this one off and pop up your third, which is top ten strokes gained. This is the important one. Top ten strokes gained on Palspalum courses the last two years. So. Let's get into that because that meant that means that we're going to be taking a look at um, uh, the the following events. You, you want to take a look at Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rico Open, the Punta Cana Championship, and the the Worldwide Technology Championship at Mayacoba, which was not last year. So don't do twenty three, but do twenty two, twenty one, twenty. Yep. If you take a look at those courses, that's where the Palspalum uh, deal yep. comes in there. And that's when I, – I, and I needed that. I needed something, and I'm glad you were able to find that because that yep. gave us some really good options. Yeah, um, you know, just another plug for Fantasy National, which I use for all my research, does give you the ability to, you know, filter out by just these Palspalum courses. And they're rare – and like you said, there's only only a few they play every year. Obviously, these guys don't all play those events, so it's 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 a it's a small sample size we're looking at with a lot of this stuff. So you do want to be a little careful. But there there are definitely guys that jump as just playing well on this type of grass. Um, you know, Brent, Brandon Wu is the one who immediately sticks out in this event in particular. He's Absolutely, awesome at um, Cameron Champ, who we'll talk about, has played well on these type of golf courses. So you see the top ten there. And then, yeah, we also looked at um, top 10 in strokes gain off the tee plus driving distance. I weighted strokes gain off the tee at 50%, driving distance at 50%. Took the last 12 months to see who was best in that metric in this field. Because this this is a this is a super long course. It's not hard, but it's long. It's it's um 70 almost 7,500 yards as a par 71. It's the sixth longest course that they play on the PGA Tour. 
Um, so distance is definitely an advantage here. Um, it does have wide fairways. You can you can kind of just grip and rip. You can kind of just bomb it here. You don't kind of worry about too much trouble off the tee. So, and you know, we've seen Finau do well because of his distance. Um, so I I, I did um, favor long hitters this week. Yeah, that's no question. You have to do that for sure, and that will resemble uh, what we're doing here this week as far as our picks and of course our one and done options. Okay, so. Let's uh, continue um, and, and get into our picks because, let's see. Well, your picks – I have three picks before your first regarding the <laughs> odds. But I'm, yeah. I'm all, all with you as far as waiting and just gambling on some big numbers this week. Uh-huh. But uh, three of my picks uh, are going to be uh, uh, Grillo, Grillo at 25 to 1, Dietri at 25 to 1, and who was my other guy? Uh, and uh, uh, oh, the other one was uh, Hoygaard. So uh, those are my top three. And matter of fact, let me just uh, there you go. Okay, so there you see the picks. Those are Jared's picks, obviously on the left, and my picks on the right. Okay, so all right, let's get into it because Grio and Dietri and Hoygaard all have uh, good numbers on these courses. So that is important. Even Grio went from 33rd and 22 to 5th last year. So that was a big jump on this on this specific mm-hmm. golf course. And you might say, um, what about Grio? His form isn't there, but don't worry about that. He won the Charles Schwab last year off of a miscut. Um, so I'm not worried about that. Dietry is still coming off. You know, he didn't play last week, so he's still in form. 28th, 4th, and 20th in his last three events. And he's pretty strong on these courses. He was 8th and 13th at Punakana, 15th at Mayakoba. I like that combination. And mm-hmm. then, and he's also, um, what was the one that I was looking at? Oh, I got to ask you, what about, because this is the low scoring, easy golf course. Uh, mm-hmm. What about, do you look at players that are really good at, or, or pro, really good at birdies? Yep. Or, against if they're not really good at birdies how do you look at that stats wise yes um birdies or better gained is part of the model i ran for this week um didn't include it as a top 10 list just because i didn't want to give you like five top 10 lists okay. this week but um i mean if you want the top 10 birdies or better gained over the last 12 months justin Su is number one your boy Ho- hoygaard is number two your boy Dietrich is number three. Oh. There, there you go. Um, Jaeger, Jaeger's four, Michael Kim, five, Hubbard. One of my bets is six, uh, Harry Hall, Scott Piercy, Nate Lashley, and Aaron Rye round out the top 10 for birdies or better. That's that, that definitely something you want to look at this week. Cause you do, you're probably going to have to, unless the wind picks up, you're going to have to, you know, get to 20, 22 under to win this probably. Okay. Very cool. So there you go. So that's why Grillo, uh, Dietrich and Hoygaard are my top three picks. Okay, so now let's move on over because uh, let's see your first pick odds wise, uh, starting with the odds is um, now I have Brandon Wu at forty five to one in my picks, and you have Ch- uh, Gim at who's forty five to one on your picks. Those are your second pick, by the way. Is um, uh, what did I just say? My guy Hubbard. Hubbard. No, no, no. The because Hubbard went to fifty oh, okay. to one. Okay, no, quickly. Uh, Gim. Uh, Gim. Gim's my first, yeah. So, uh, Gim uh, is trending in the right direction. Back to back top 15 is coming in. And so, obviously, that is, uh, I'm sure maybe that had something to do with why you like him. And then, uh, Brandon Wu, I mean, how are you not? Yeah. I don't care if his, he, yeah, his doesn't have tremendous form, but who cares? Right. I mean, third and second in this event. And mm-hmm. then you take a look at how he played over in the other events. And that was, let's see, which is the one that he also has two top fives at? Uh, I can tell I got you it. Second, it's yeah, here he's, somewhere. He's, he's second best in the field and possible course. Oh, Puerto he's Rico. Second, second best in course history, yeah. Puerto Rico, third and seventh. Yeah. So Puerto Rico, third and seventh. And here, third and second. How do you not take him? Uh, that's why he's in my picks. Yeah, I also looked at just who the best putters are on Pos Palum Greens, and Brandon Wu is number one in that. Oh, set. So okay, that's, that's that makes been a sense. Lot of for his success, yeah. Okay. Yep. So, what about your uh, gim pick? 
Yeah, like you said, playing well. Uh, if you just look at since you know since the start of this year, Gim is eighth in this field in strokes gained total. Like you said, thirteenth at Farmers, twelfth at Waste Management. His last two timeouts. Gim actually isn't a long hitter. He's kind of like field average. Uh, he's 99th in driving distance, but he's still 11th best in strokes gained off the tee over the last 12 months. So he kind of does it in other ways. Um, he's also 21st best in approach over the last 12 months. Uh, did, he, Gim did miss the cut here last year. He really wasn't playing well at that point. He came 33rd in 2022. And again, I think he's playing even better now than he was then. So I think it's definitely a spot where Gim could get his first win. Yeah, I know you picked him once or twice last year, too. Yeah, I love. It. I mean, you know, he's my kind of player, right? He's an excellent ball striker, bad putter, but we're hoping to, uh, you know, catch catch one of those Wyndham Clark, Nick Taylor putting performances. <laughs> All right, and then you've got Champ and Hubbard at fifty to one. <laughs> Hubbard is your top choice, and we've talked about him recently on this show. Uh, yeah. Hubbard went from fifty first to eighteenth in his two visits on this golf course. Um, so start with Hubbard. Yeah, and Hubbard and Champ really couldn't be uh, more different profiles. Um, Hubbard, kind of like Gim, not not a bomber. Those are kind of the two guys I, I bet that um, – I guess there's one other one that's not like a, not a bomber. Um, but H- Hubbard, for me, checks every other box I'm looking for. He is first in this field in strokes gain approach over the last 12 months. He's good on long approaches. He's 28th in proximity from 200-plus yards. And you actually get – this course you get 40 percent of approach shots come from 200 plus yards the tour average is 23 percent. so nearly twice as many approaches are going to come from that you know 200 plus yard bucket so those are going to be important hubbard's good there um hubbard is third in this field and stro- strokes gain total this year and like you said 18th here last year despite losing strokes off the tee you know which again is because he's not a long hitter but um you know if he, if he can get it down with those long irons i think you know hubbard's going to give himself enough enough looks at birdie yeah, Champ uh, has played here twice, eighth and sixth, yeah. which is he's never done anything like that before, except when he's won, because he's he's like well, he's got two wins, and he it, does pretty much nothing else. Yes, exactly. He Ch- Champ could very easily miss the cut, but yeah. if, like he does, and he's probably gonna be in the top ten and in the mix on Sunday. He he is the sh- strangest profile that uh, of anyone I have ever looked at. I think as a golfer, I mean, even this year missed cuts in all four of his starts this season. Um, you look at when he came sixth here in 2022, he had two missed cuts in his three starts prior. He did come 10th at the Masters in his start before here. And the Masters is another place where he, for whatever reason, tends to play really well, um, which I guess it's another course that kind of you know favors distance off the tee, so it does make some sense. Last year, Cam Champ came eighth here. He had missed six straight cuts <laughs> leading into the eighth place here. So, like, I just, I just don't care the fact yeah. that he's been missing cuts. He fits this golf course and yep. over the last twelve months. He's second best off the tee. He's first in driving distance. He's sixth best in proximity from two hundred plus yards. He just does everything well that you need to do here. So, hopefully, he just, he just finds the form which he's done in the past. And like you said, he has won on the PGA Tour before, which a lot of the guys in this range on the betting board have not done. All right, and then at fifty-five to one, you and I uh, both have uh, a player each, and I, I like your Vegas pick uh, because Vegas uh, is good on this uh, type of course, yep. and you know he's just getting back into the swing of things. Um, and then my fifty-five to one shot is Maverick McNeely, mm-hmm. and McNeely is coming off that really good sixth at Phoenix, and he did play this course last year. Didn't have a good result but he made he didn't make the cut but he does usually well uh early in the season and he also was uh in his three trips to mayakoba 10th 11th and 12th so i like that combination and i think talent wise he's he should be like 25 to 1 talent wise he's just he hasn't gotten consistent yet. And again, he's coming off an injury situation similar to Vegas. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I think like two years ago, McNeely would have been probably with like the 25 to the 30 to one group yeah. in this field, right? Like that's kind of where he was um, at that point and where he probably still is talent wise if he's healthy and if everything's firing. So he, he definitely makes sense. Um, yeah. Vegas, he's a guy I love betting because he's an excellent ball striker who, who can't putt. And I just, I just kind of need it, needed to see any signs of life for him to get back on. And he, he gave me that at waste management last time out 22nd there. Um, he was 10th best off the tee 
in that field. He was 14th best on approach. Um, so the ball striking seems to be back after he missed pretty much all of last year with an elbow injury. Um, he Vegas hasn't played here, but like you said, he is 14th best on pass palm courses over the last couple of years. He is also 10th best in this field in strokes gain off the tee over the last 12 months. He's 11th best in this field in driving distance. So despite the fact that he hasn't played here, it, sh- it should be a course that, that suits his game. And then at 60 to one, because he's dropped from 80 to one is Alex mm-hmm. Smalley. So uh, you have Smalley at 60 to one, and you also have uh, at 80 to one. Uh, who's your 80 to one chat? Carson Young. Carson Young, the other, yeah. the other K, the other C Young, yeah, uh, is uh, in the mix here as well. Fifteenth uh, in his first appearance here last year. So uh, talk about those two long shots. Yeah, Smalley was mostly a model play for me because he pops third in my model over the last twelve months, and it's because he, he kind of does everything pretty well that we're looking for here. He is twentieth best in this field, strokes gain off the tee, including thirty fifth in driving distance. He's fifth best. In this field, strokes gain approach over the last 12 months. He's also uh, fourth on Pops Palom courses. That includes a sixth place finish here back in 2022. He's not playing super well coming in to this event. He hasn't played well his last three events, but he did come 21st at the Amex, um, you know, about a month ago. So there, there is some form there. Um, and again, I just he just seems like he's a good fit on this course. And uh, my uh, long shot pick to me, I think, is a no brainer long shot pick. And that's Nate Lashley. Nate Lashley is set. Uh, what is he? Seventy to one, I believe, right now. And uh, yeah, seventy to one. And uh, if you take a look at it, uh, Lashley has played here twice. He does have an eleventh that was, and he made both cuts. But take a look at Nashley. Here, here's some interesting things on Nashley. Uh, Puerto Rico third and seventh. Punta Cana fifteenth. And I'm going to give you a really good one. He won. The KFT event at Punta Cana. So, Dang, look at that. That's yeah. digging deep. Yes. So deep. there you go. Uh, I think at 70 to 1, he is yep. a really good uh, long – one of those uh, where did that guy come from possibilities. Yep. So. Yeah, ninth, ninth in this field on Pass Palm. And that, that doesn't even include the KFT. Yes. Thing. Okay. Now, uh, as far as the rest of the field – because again, there's a lot of guys to, to consider. Look, Jaeger is a definitely a consideration. Um, don't worry about. Interesting, he he played this event both years, following a missed cut. He just missed a cut of pebble, and he was mm-hmm. 18th last year, 15th the year before that. So don't worry about the missed cut. Uh, we know that he's getting close, and we also know that that missed cut was the first missed cut in a very long time for him. Uh, Pendrith, I was uh, very interested in. He's mm-hmm. quietly. Uh, with five top 15s in his last seven, one yep. top five, but he has missed two cuts. That's the reason why he's kind of been, you know, top 10, miscut, top 10, miscut deal. And uh, he is 86th in the world. He has never finished a season inside the top 100. Mitchell was another one that I was seriously considering, and he's at the top of one of your stats too. Don't forget mm-hmm. he won the Honda in 2019 which came just about similar time of year, and he seems to be trending in the right direction as well. This is usually the better time of year, at least it has been the last few years for Mitchell. He seems to get off to good starts early in the season. So as far as the top guys, th- those are some really, uh, you know, those are ones that I, I would definitely consider. Yeah, Mitchell first in that um, strokes gain off the tee plus driving distance. Um, he's actually third in this field in strokes gain total over the last couple months since the start of the year so you know he's kind of sneakily playing well good course fit for him so i think mitchell and jaeger would be the two like you know sub 30 to one that i would consider jaeger just you know just just came close to winning at tory he's added a lot of distance off the tee he's one of the longer hitters in the field now the other guy i actually did bet at 50 to one but now i think he's down to 35 so i left him off my official card for this show is um davis thompson okay who has been playing pretty well coming in good course fit here he is um 16th best off the tee 22nd in driving distance in this field over the last 12 months he's also eighth best in this field in proximity from 200 plus yards um so he's i think he's good on birdies too he is 37th in this field birdies are better gained over the last 12 months so yeah pretty pretty solid checks a lot of boxes for me um and he is yeah he's he's ninth in this field in strokes game total since the start of the new year so he's he's playing pretty well 
Uh, others uh, to consider as far as um, I'm concerned, Patrick Rogers finished 10th here both years, both at 13 under par. And I'm not worried about his miscut form because uh, he actually historically has done well at times after miscuts. So don't worry about that. Uh, Nap at why not? Nap at 40 to 1. I know okay. we don't see anything on this course, but, you know, he's still an interesting story and he's coming in playing really good golf. Uh, Michael Kim, I was close to taking. Uh, mm. Michael Kim, 30th year last year. Uh, I, and I looked at his numbers in the birdies. I think last year maybe he was third in birdies. I forget what it was. Or PJ Tour right. stats is all I had, and I had him at third. Yeah. So he must be doing good there. And then yeah, I have fifth. Fifth? I have, I have him fifth, and birdies are better the last 12 months. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Puerto Rico, fifth and 16th. So uh, Michael Kim is somebody that I was considering. Uh, keep in keep in uh, uh, keep in mind Matt Wallace, who's sixty to one, won uh, the Punta Cana event last year. Sam Stevens, I was that close to, to putting him into my long shots. I put him in. I think I put him in uh, not too long ago. Uh, Stevens, fifteenth of Puerto Rico, third of Punta Cana. He's trending in the right direction. He's got a good uh, power game. Um, mm-hmm. So that's uh, why I was considering him, and also Harry Hall was somebody that um, I wanted to keep an eye on as well because he's pretty good on these golf courses. And 10th last year here. so. Yep, Hall, yeah, Hall makes sense. Bomber, who putts well. Stevens definitely makes sense. Um, Eric Van Royen, I think, is worth considering. Um, he's played pretty well in these types of courses. He's a long hitter. Um, Austin Ekero is definitely worth considering. He's just a good young player, I think, is, is, is going to win at some point. And then Rio Histatuni, is that Histatuni? I I already forgot. I know you had the pronunciation. Yeah, I've got it somewhere. Rio, yeah, Rio, um, I think is another uh, longer shot. I think he's in the 50 to 1 range to to maybe look at. Yeah, let's see. Do I have it here? Uh, While I look for it, Uh, here it is. Where is it? Uh, uh, It's uh, Rio Histatuni. Rio Histatuni. The 2023 really European yeah. Tour Rookie of the Year. Just how it's spelled. Yeah, I, I know, right? Imagine that. <laughs> it's not that hard. All right, so let's get into – oh, by the way, so as far as the one and dones, um, again, like I said, you have to – you definitely have to consider Finau and Hoygaard in my mind, uh, the top two choices, mm-hmm. so that's not – we're not going crazy. But um, I, I guess, look, if I was really narrowing it down, I'd pro- I mean, I would consider McNeely. Uh, I yep. mean, I, I think you have to consider Brandon Wu a little bit, don't you? I mean, maybe. Uh, I know yep. it's kind of hard to take him in a one and done, but I'm probably also seriously looking at D, uh, uh, Dietrich and Grio. I think mine. I don't think I'm going to play Fina. I actually, I, I think I want to save him for a, a bigger event because um, you know he, he's another guy who I think tends to just play well on tougher. He can obviously play well here. He has, but um, he, you know he tends to play well on tougher golf courses. I think. Um, Hoygaard, I'm definitely considering Gager, I'm considering, and then I think Keith Mitchell would be the third guy I'm considering. So those are, those are kind of my top three at this point for one and done. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it is one of those things where if you don't, if you don't think you're going to take fee now, uh, even though there are other courses he's good at, if you don't think mm-hmm. you're going to take him, then y- you might want to take him this, this week. I mean, why not? I mean, if- yeah. And you know, it's, it's, it's early to be considering like where you are in the standings. But for, like for me, I'm I, I'm off to a horrible start. So I almost already want to make sure I'm getting different and I'm not picking someone who's you know going to be 25 percent owned. If you're someone that's up near the top of your one and done pool, you can you know consider just just burning fee now here. Okay, now let's get into the futures segment as uh, uh, we've got a uh, about 10, 15 minutes there. So let's take a look first of all at the Masters. I'm just uh, popping up. I'm just going to pop up the uh, current odds for the Masters right now. So there you go. Those are the current odds for the Masters. We'll just run through. And obviously you can uh, follow along with us uh, over on Draft Sharks. All right. So the other thing I'm going to pop up here, though, is what you've got here as far as your stats for the Masters. Uh, so just check that out. Nine of the last 12 Masters winners checked all three of these boxes. So you can see them right there. Talk about those boxes. Yeah, and this is something we we talked about last year. I remember heading into the event, and there were there were four guys that check, I'd have to go back and look. There were four guys that checked all the boxes, 
one of them was Rom, who ended up winning. Uh, I know another one was Scheffler, and there were two others. Um, so, you know, at that point, it was 8 of, eight of 11 had checked all these three. Now it's 9 of 12. So I, I'm kind of liking this um, three-pack of, of trends that I, I put together for the Masters. So, it's you know, it's obviously too early to know who's going to check the final two boxes as far as strokes gained. But, you know, basically – with the masters and there are some course fit things that I look at. I mean, you want to be you ideally want to be a long hitter at the masters because it is a long, pretty wide open golf course. But for me, the masters is always just who's played well here in the past. It's like the most predictive course history of any course they play in the PGA tour. So who's played well in the past and then who's just playing well coming in. You go, go back and look at the masters winners, at least over the last 10 years or so, very few like surprise winners of guys who weren't playing well coming in. Right. So and, and, and that's kind of what these three boxes look at. Right. You want to have someone who's finished uh, in the top 20 at Augusta before. Then you just want guys who are hitting it well. Um, tee to green coming in. So yeah, as, as we get closer, we can start looking at um, you know, how many guys check those three boxes. Yeah. My trends uh, from last year's event, I haven't updated these yet. But my trends from last year had, f- had the last 10 first time winners ranked inside the top 30. Yeah. So there you go. The cream definitely rising to the top. Uh, yeah. And the last 10 first-time winners made an average of 6.9 appearances. So you do yep. want to have some experience there for sure. And the last 10 winners had an average world ranking of 10.9 with two of the last three winners ranking number one. So yep. uh, it's not really oh. the golf course that you're looking for the long shots. Exactly. As I, say, I usually don't go too far down the board in masters betting um you know, ha- what's del torres down to now Tw- is he 25 did i see uh let's pop it up Zella torres. even that's not even that's not bad 22, 20, uh, 22 to one now yeah yeah oh and hideki's down to 28 <laughs> yeah right well he's already dustin, got a green jacket so all right dustin johnson's not a bad look i mean he seems to be playing well and live has a good course history here yeah these two got their green jackets when nobody was watching Yep. <laughs> so yep. take that for whatever way you want to. But yeah, Zalatoris, even at 22 to 1, may not be a bad one. Justin Thomas is also 22 to 1. You know, Spieth, 18 to 1. We know he's going to contend there. So yeah, the Masters is definitely one of those deals where, unfortunately, it's not really. Look, if you're thinking of long shots, I would consider like someone like. Um, you know, some of the older guys like Louis Oosthuizen, you know, because uh, we've seen yeah. the old guy. I mean, Mickelson was runner up last year for crying out loud. Let's yeah, keep right. that in mind. How has, how has Wyndham Clark done at Augusta? Because he's someone who should be good here and he's playing well. You know, he bombs it. Yeah, I don't know. He's 40 he's to never one. Played, never played the Masters? Really? Okay. Well, his win at Wells Fargo came after. So. That, almost that almost doesn't even seem right. Uh, it's possible. Right well, if that's the case, don't bet him because, you know, we know. Yeah, he has never played the Masters. Wow. You know, Cam Young is a guy you would think would play well at the Masters. He's 35 to 1. He was in the mix, uh, was it two years ago? And he, he kind of, you know, does what Cam Young does and played it on Sunday. But yeah. He, uh, I was, it was, yeah, last year he finished seventh. And Hoy Guard is 65 to 1. So there are a few, you know, a few. I mean, Adam Scott is 100 to 1. So I, I, if you're looking at long shots, I'd be looking at guys like Adam Scott. I don't know if Ustazen's in here. Um, but look at guys like that. Guys that, because it happened, like I was saying before, every mm-hmm. year you're going to get these older yeah. guys that just hang around. Justin Rose at 60 to 1, who has always had a good history at the Masters and has never won it and came close, of course, losing to Garcia in the playoff. So, yeah. I see. Did I see Siwoo Kim at 100 to 1? See someone who, um, yes, you did. Yeah. One hundred and thirty to one. That ain't bad. I mean, Sibu is someone I think that can win a major in his career. We, we've already seen him win the players, and he has made the cut um, six straight appearances at the Masters. Twelfth place, best finish. So he does check the top twenty box. Um, but again, the, the Masters is not a bad tournament to place futures. I think because again, you want guys that are trending coming in. So if you if you see someone over the next two three weeks that you just think is playing well, yeah. And you think they have a decent number at Augusta, like to you know, put, put a bet on them. Because, again, you do want guys who ha- have played well over the first, uh, you know, three, four months of the year. Bubba's at 180 to 1. You can't forget about Bubba at the Masters. What's he doing on live? Anything? No. 
<laughs> Another one of those guys that you're like, okay, I guess he just took his money. All right. So <laughs> next up, let's pop up. Uh, where are we? Let's pop up the PGA Championship because these are the more difficult ones because it's a different golf course. Valhalla. Uh, so those are your winners at Valhalla. <laughs> Uh, Rory back in uh, 10 years ago. Um, so that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Jack Nicholas design. And then you've got stats on this one. T top 10 strokes gain on Nicholas courses the last two yep. years. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is worth considering, right? Because I think an architect's going to have some similarities from course course, but, but you know, Valhalla is obviously going to play tough. Some of these Nicholas courses are super easy. The, the one that I think might have the most crossover is Memorial which is a Nicholas design course. And it's, you know, tough, tight, tight fairways, long rough. So maybe as we get closer to PGA and you know, looking at just who's played well at Memorial, but you, you do see the top 10 strokes gain on Nicholas courses. There also included some other notables who, you know, just missed the um, top 10 Will Zell Torres in, in 15th there. And then um, the other notable thing, at least at this, at this, you know, this far out from the PGA is we're going to have bent grass greens at Valhalla, which we haven't had at all yet this year. That's definitely a more of a, northeast or, or east coast type of, of grass um, do we know which see. event does have before pga um i mean i like i know i'm trying to think which um events we'll get is the, the memorials after pga right like there honestly might not be okay any well, well you know what i mean it's tough to compare but i know augusta is bent grass you know those greens are kind of their own their own animal um we're, pr we're probably not gonna have many um but again we, you know we do have this data from your previous seasons who who puts well best on those type of greens yeah and, and a lot of the guys are not your typical top players right exactly so there you go exactly. so this this might be one where you can actually yeah. do some nice futures wagering yep and uh yeah so look look, yeah. look at the bottom you got scotty scheffler <laughs> yeah uh jt yeah, Sh you know, scheffler i mean yeah, I mean, and, and these are those those five guys at the bottom are guys who just generally don't putt well on any surface, but they definitely don't putt well on bent grass either. So you definitely got to factor that in. All right, well that's good. So I would definitely look at PGA Championship um, as a good uh, potential futures play. U.S. Open, let's pop that up. Hold on one second. There you go. So Pinehurst. this will be at Pinehurst. Yeah. Martin yeah. Keimer, my boy, uh, won when uh, – and I bet him, of course. That's why he's my boy back in 2014. And look at that. So Michael Campbell – well, Keimer had come off the players' win. So it wasn't like he was a long shot uh, mm -hmm. that year. No, wait. When, was it the players' win, was it? Uh, it might have been, yeah. I think he's won, did he, uh, he won the players and the U.S. Open in the same year. Um, there's Michael Campbell. So it's a Donald Ross design. And you've got the ten, top 10 strokes gained on Ross courses the last two years. Uh, you got Bermuda Greens, top 10 strokes gained putting on Bermuda Greens the last two years. So talk about uh, talk about this uh, U.S. Open. Yeah, and what I thought was interesting about the Ross designs, I'm going to actually pull up uh, which courses that factors in, but Scotty Scheffler, 131st on Donald Ross courses. Yeah. Uh, Again, you know, these are like smaller sample size. I'm hey, you, know, you didn't win a major maybe. last year. So, yeah. So, I mean, the, the Ross courses they've played recently are East Lake and Sedgefield. So with those courses, um, and again, we're looking at like eight rounds for Scotty Scheffler. But, you know, he, he actually, Scotty Scheffler has not played well at East Lake at, you know, the, for, at the Tour Championship where it, you know, that's a Donald Ross course. So that's something yeah. to consider. Um, and yeah, these are Bermuda greens. When I think Bermuda, I immediately think of Sam Burns, who's like the best Bermuda putter. Um, so I think he's an interesting, um, you know, not, not long shot play, but he's, he's probably what, you know, 40, 50 to one. I don't know if you have the, yeah, I do. Let's um, uh, take a look. Now it's pulled up. I think, you know, Burns is someone who, um, you know, again, just, just based on, on the green type, someone who could be a decent look here. Yeah, we're at the U.S. Open. So let me pop up the U.S. Open odds. I forgot to do the PGA Championship. But, you know, they're all the same. Uh, odds are pretty exactly, much the yeah. same. But, uh, all right, so what are we, who are we looking for? Uh, Sam Burns. Oh, yeah, Sam Burns. She is, where is Sam Burns? Oh, man. Oh, man. 65 to 1. That's that. See, to me, I mean, to me, that's a, that's a, that's a bat. Even if these weren't for me. I, I know the guy doesn't have a great major record so far, but. Um, yeah. There you go. Give me, give me Sam Burns on Bermuda Greens at 65 to 1. I'll, I'll take my chances. Yeah. And, you know, what's interesting is that you've got McNeely here. 
And I remember you had McNeely in the other one too, somewhere for the PGA Championship. You had him uh, 10th, top 10 strokes gained putting on Betgrass. Well, he's, yeah, just, he's, just, he's a just a good putter. He's just a good putter. <laughs> yeah. But he's, yeah, I mean, but he, he's better on Bermuda. He's second best on Bermuda, so. Yeah. But, okay, yeah. So definitely forget. So in other words, at these two events, and I'm, let me just quickly pop up the odds, even though I don't think we're going to see anything uh, crazy for, a, you know, as far as anything different um, at the PGA Championship either. Uh, who, who was it? The, uh, the uh, give me a couple Burns? of players that, yes, yeah, no, give me a couple of players at the PGA championship that, uh, that was in that, that top 10. Yeah. So, I mean, if we, if you want to look at Nicholas courses, um, Cantley, Cantley and Burns, I mean, Burns is 10th best on Nicholas courses. All right. He's 65 you know, to one here as well. I, mean, I, I think Burns at either of these, but he doesn't play well at majors is the problem. Yeah, you know? I know, but I think he, I think he will. I think he will at some point of his career. Um, I mean, for, for Val Hell, I look at Rory and Tiger winning. I think, like, you want to be an excellent driver and a long hitter off the tee. So I think that's definitely going to be something to look at. Um, you know, Wyndham Clark is 17th best on Nicholas courses. He's also 20th best bent grass putter. And I think he's someone that you know could fit that course pretty well. 60 to 1, not bad. Siwoo Kim. Siwoo Kim was on... He is, yeah, he's fourth best on Nicholas courses. He's 100 to 1 for the PGA Championship. And again, I would, uh, I, I'm, I'm probably going to, I said this before, I already put futures money on uh, Ustazen for all the majors because he's a he's big odds and mm-hmm. he got off to a good start overseas this year. So now he's playing at Live. So we'll see if he does uh, well there. If he does, uh, keep an eye on Ustazen in one of these majors. So, okay. And um, and then finally, uh, we've got the Open Championship. So let me slide on down here. Where's the Open Championship? So this is Royal Troon, and um, it's 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 much tougher to find uh, info on these courses overseas. Um, now, this is the course where you had the Hendrick Stenson Phil Mickelson duel, where you know Stenson ended up winning at minus oh twenty. Oh my lord! Still was minus 17. Third place was minus six. That is nuts. I remember that now. Yeah, I, I remember them pulling away. I don't remember it being that big of a Holy crap. I have I have no clue. And we never know what to expect for winning scores at the Opens because it always depends on the wind. But Here especially, press. I have no clue whether to expect, you know, something at, at minus 20 or something, you know, closer to minus six. Um, I, I did find that these are bent grass greens. I have no idea how similar bent grass greens are over yeah. there to here. So I, I'm not going to factor that in too heavily for, for the opens. I always like just looking at guys who have played well in previous opens. Cause you know, a lot of these courses are similar in how, how they're designed and how you, you know, it's, it's, it's different golf over there is different than it is here. Right. It's a lot more um, creativity and stuff than, you know, here you kind of get more of the bomb and gouge type courses. Well, JT's 35 to 1. Cameron Young, we know how good he played at the Open uh, yeah, recently. Like He's that. 40 to 1. Uh, let's see. Like Any... for, a, for a top five, I don't know if I trust the guy to win. but <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else that looks good as far as the Open Championship? Uh, let's... Sahith. Sah- Sahith Tagala should be good at Opens, I feel like, just with his short game and creativity. You know, He's kind of he's kind of like Spiethian to me. He's okay. kind of similar player to Spieth. 100 to 1. I think Sahith's 100 Yep. I like that. Hoy guards at 80. Adam Scott's at 65. Rose is at 65. It's surprising Rose hasn't played play, uh, better uh, over there. Right. Is is Joaquin Neiman qualified for all the majors? Uh, I think he... Because I... What, do you got to be in the top 50 or some other deals? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe Joaquin someone... Neiman is definitely somebody to keep an eye on. You're, you're right. Uh, and, yeah, and, he's 100 and, and, to and 1. That, yeah, right. But and d- definitely make check to make sure he's qualified because a lot of these books, if you place a futures bet, that's true. And the guy doesn't end up playing, you, you lose that money. Whereas yeah. if you if you make the bet the week of the tournament and you know they withdraw or whatever, you at least get refunded. But you got to be careful with the futures because they'll they'll just take your money if you bet someone and he ends up not you know qualifying. Uh, let me see, what are his odds at the Masters? Where the hell is he at the Masters? I uh, see he might. I don't see him here. 
So I'm seeing, okay, so maybe DraftKings is, is being nice to us and only listening him in uh, majors he's qualified for, because I'm seeing he is qualified for the Open. But that, that might be it as of now. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Which is, which is sad. Okay, I mean, I... All right. Well, anyway, at least it gives everybody a head start. And if you have any specific questions regarding these majors uh, we, that we can answer for you, uh, that's what the comment section is for. Let us know. You could also uh, log on to our Discord channel, more personal one-on-one, even though everybody can see it, but uh, not as many people. So, um, yeah, check out the Discord, comment, like, share, all of that is all is and, – and, and we are encouraged by the views. I know we just started the channel, but um, – I think the combination of prime sports and tee off, um, I think we, we were we were close to 300 last week. So I'm I'm encouraged by that. It's uh, it's we know golf isn't the biggest deal on YouTube, but um, and and we don't have any like huge marketing uh, partners right now. So we're, we're looking for those because we know with uh, Jan uh, having a Hall of Famer on board. Having uh, a really cool stat statistician junkie nerd like Jared on board, um, <laughs> and then uh, you know just uh, if if we could find a real good marketing partner, that would be awesome. So anybody out there in golf uh, that uh, you know, if you happen to be somebody involved in one of those companies, uh, let us know. We'd love to get involved. Um, you know, whether I don't even know if we've contacted anybody recently at fantasy national golf stats i use them so we both like them a lot we, we use uh, them a lot for our research um but it doesn't mean that uh, they had they're, they're obviously uh you know um, obligated to partner with us but that's the kind of thing that we think would really put us over the top so any recommendations let us know um and again uh next week jared will be off jan will be on as we take a look at the Florida Swing for PJ National, and it'll be called the Cognizant <laughs> Classic, maybe? Cognizant Cogn- Classic. I think okay. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. Okay, so the Cognizant uh, Classic next week at PJ National. Jared will be back after that for Bay Hill, and that, of course, is still – that's a big uh, event, right? That's the signature still? That is signature, and that's another one that has the $4 million to first place. All right. That's Scotty Scheffler will be big there. So th- th- what you just said before about Scotty Scheffler yeah. being uh, taken off the, the board by a lot of people, maybe Scheffler will be on our board for that week. Cause there's some good ones to consider that week. You know, Rory, you could consider oh, yeah. Matthew Fitzpatrick's really good there. So there are some good options uh, at, uh, at Arnold Palmer invitational. So um, anyway, That'll wrap it up. Jared, appreciate it. As always, enjoy your week off uh, here on our golf coverage, and we'll talk to you in – we'll see you, Jared, in a couple of weeks. Yep, good luck this week, Greg. You too, and good luck to everybody out there. We'll see you guys next week.